What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about how to get into Washington University in St. Louis. I've got five tips for you which, if you apply them all to your life and your application, will greatly increase your chances of getting into Washington University in St. Louis, which is actually located both in unincorporated St. Louis County, Missouri, and the city of Clayton, Missouri, both of which are just outside of the official city limits of St. Louis. Let's get started with tip number one. To get into Wash U, you really do need to strive to reach the exact same sort of foundational level of excellence as I advise my Ivy League applicants to achieve because the same students applying to Ivy and Ivy Light schools like Penn, Emory, Northwestern, and Rice are also attracted to and applying for admission at Wash U. I want you to be able to compete with all applicants to Wash U, not just get in by the skin of your teeth. So for that reason, below this video, in the description section, please find a link to my How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically article, which is published over at admissions.blog. Read every word of that article, the earlier in high school the better, because if you can do everything that article is advising, you will go into the formal college application process during the summer before your senior year in high school, well positioned to get into Washington University in St. Louis. Really read this article carefully and take it seriously. This is so important because in this article, I provide specific advice about how to make smart academic, testing, extracurricular, and personal communication skills development choices throughout your high school career that will lay the foundation for a successful college application process. When reading this article, you will note that I want you to achieve the exact same sort of standardized testing profile for Wash U as I advise applicants to achieve if they want to get into an Ivy. Specifically, your goal should be to earn a 1450 plus on the SAT or a 33 plus on the ACT. Shout out as always to convertyourscore.org as the go-to site for SAT ACT conversions and your ultimate ACT ACT knowledge base. Convertyourscore.org also goes into detail about other important tests that wise applicants to Wash U will also take, SAT subject tests. Again, exactly as I advise in my How to Get Into the Ivy League Ethically article, you should plan to take at least two SAT subject tests and earn 750 plus on both to give yourself the best shot of admission to Wash U. This is because Wash U will only consider SAT subject test scores if they strengthen your overall application. Once you hit a score of 750 plus on two SAT subject tests, your scores will likely strengthen your overall application compared to the rest of the Wash U applicant pool during any given admission cycle. Moving on to tip number two, if Wash U is your first choice and you feel comfortable emotionally and financially committing to attending, please apply Early Decision 1. As always, Early Decision is a binding agreement. If you get into Wash U Early Decision, otherwise known as ED, you are committing to attend. Wash U offers Early Decision 1, Early Decision 2, and Regular Decision. Wash U is one of those colleges that gives great preference to those students who apply binding Early Decision. For some context, Last year's Wash U ED acceptance rate was three times higher than its regular acceptance rate. Therefore, if you can get your act together early enough, use the earlier ED1 deadline if you are ready to attend Wash U when or if admitted. Now, with that said, ED2 is still a great option if you figure out Wash U is your first choice sometimes, sometime between, let's say, November 1st and January 1st of your senior year. If you are planning to apply to Wash U uh, regular decision, good luck, because Wash U has become so highly selective over the past 20 years because of its reliance on ED1, and in more recent years, ED2, regular decision has become a battle that I would not want to fight. Applying to a Wash U regular is like signing up, in my opinion, to swim with the sharks. I wouldn't risk being in an ocean full of students who just got rejected from Princeton, Georgetown, Stanford, and Notre Dame early action, or Rice, Northwestern, Cornell, and Penn ED. But that's exactly what you are going to be doing to yourself 
if you find yourself applying to WashU regular decision. So bottom line with tip number two, if WashU were my first choice, I would apply ED1 or at least ED2. Tip number three, Washington University in St. Louis understands that the Common Applications Activities page is a small, one-size-fits-all form that does not allow the typical WashU applicant to appropriately elaborate on the depth and breadth of his or her extracurricular accomplishments uh, throughout his or her high school career. With this in mind, WashU, on its supplements of the Common application allows applicants to upload a full-fledged, unabridged, extracurricular resume. This is an amazing opportunity if you grab it, but far too few students do. Believe it or not, a lot of students will upload nothing in this optional portion of the WashU supplement. Still others will upload a prosaic little resume that doesn't go far, if at all, beyond what the student already shared in the activities page of the common part of the common application. Use this resume upload opportunity to elaborate on extracurricular activities that you began describing in the activities page of the Common App and or use this resume upload opportunity to describe for the first time activities that never made the cut at all to be included on the 10 entry Common App activities page. Now you don't just want to use a random format or structure for this resume upload. You want to convey more information about your extracurricular depth and breadth, but you need to do so effectively and efficiently. With that in mind, you need to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume before you are ready to upload your resume to WashU Supplement. How do you do that? Well, you've got to take the definitive course aptly named How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. I'll say that again, how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume. It is sort of a mouthful, which I link to below in this video's description. As I often say, it's no longer about simply being a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like WashU. It's just as much, if not more important, to know how to communicate that you are a college applicant worthy of admission to a university like WashU. This online extracurricular resume building course will help you do just that vis-a-vis -vis the very important yet overlooked optional resume upload button on the WashU supplement to the common application. Let's focus now on tip number four, WashU supplemental short essay prompt. At first glance, this prompt appears wordy, but pretty straightforward. In actuality, this prompt, in my expert opinion, is one of the hardest to tackle out there. I'm going to first read the exact prompt, and then I'm going to dissect for you what it's really asking you to do. Here's the prompt. Quote, tell us about something that really sparks your intellectual interest and curiosity and compels you to explore more in the program area of study or area of study that you indicated. It could be an idea, book, project, cultural activity, work of art, startup, music, movie, research, innovation, question, or other pursuit. End quote. There is so much going on within that two-sentence prompt that you are not alone in feeling overwhelmed or confused about just what to write about, especially considering you only have 300 words to respond. Because there are a lot of words to digest in this prompt, the key words are very easy to overlook. The key words in the prompt are, quote, explore more in the program slash area of study that you indicated, end quote. I know this feels really odd. You see, a lot of students are going to focus on the first half of the first sentence of the prompt and the laundry list of options in the second sentence of the prompt. As a result, many students create essays that become little love notes to a subject students find interesting or a particular movie or activity or book. With only 300 words to work with, it takes a really savvy writer to pull off what WashU wants you to pull off here, which is to show yourself on WashU's campus engaging in your chosen major area. 
I know it doesn't feel like that because it's worded in some sort of an awkward way, but that's exactly what Washu wants you to do. The movie or work of art or whatever you select is just there to set the table for the majority of your short essay, which must show you running with your academic passion on WashU's campus. So for instance, let's say I am an applicant to WashU who wants to major in organization and strategic management or entrepreneurship within WashU's Olin School of Business. To complete this essay, well, I would want to start my response by showing in one or two sentences how I was fascinated and intrigued by the book why Do So Many Incompetent Men Become Leaders and How to Fix It by Thomas Chamorro Primazuk. But I would only spend a couple sentences on that book and what I felt about it. I would then quickly segue into how the book compels me to want to learn more about organization and strategic management and or entrepreneurship at Olin. Then I would proceed to show how I see myself doing both inside and outside of the classroom for four years on WashU's campus. And voila, there you have it, the structure of the essay you should write in response to this deceptively difficult WashU supplemental essay. On to tip number five, WashU gives you the opportunity to interview as part of its admissions process. Through on-campus interviews and via the Alumni and Parents Admission Program, also known as APAP, a first-year applicant to WashU has two avenues through which to interview. While on, one of them is on campus, and another one of them is through alumni interviews, which are optional, um, both of which are optional, actually, and WashU cannot guarantee the availability of alumni interviews to interview all students, particularly those living outside of well-populated areas. But I implore you to engage in either an on-campus or local alumni interview as part of your application to WashU if at all possible, no matter where you live. WashU even has two options for international students to engage in a sort of virtual interview, one through initial view and the other through a Duolingo English test. While WashU states that not interviewing won't reflect poorly on students who cannot arrange an interview, you can also bet that students who simply um, don't take the opportunity to interview or turn it down when offered the chance to interview with an alumnus, alumnus in their vicinity um, or while taking part in a pre-planned visit to campus during their senior year in high school are certainly missing out on a major opportunity. WashU collects summaries of these interviews and adds them to their applic the applicant's overall application file. Why wouldn't you want someone else, an alumni interviewer or an on-campus interviewer, to be in your corner when WashU's admissions team reviews your full application holistically? I don't know why you would want that. Uh, why you wouldn't want that. Um, it's an amazing chance to interview, to put a face to the application, differentiate yourself in person, and display a passion for and knowledge of WashU. More information about the exact mechanics of the separate types of interviews WashU offers its first-year applicants can be found below this video in the video description. But a word to the wise, even though WashU says there is no need to bring an extracurricular resume with you to the interview, I say since you're going to be putting together a great one with the help of tip number three, which I mentioned earlier, you should absolutely bring your resume with you to the interview. One copy for you and one copy for the interviewer, so you both can look down and refer to it if and when needed during the course of your interview. It's like serving up the highlights of your high school career if the interviewer is willing to look down and, and ask questions about it. So definitely bring one copy for you and one copy for the interviewer, him or herself. Also make sure to write a thank you email to your interviewer within a couple of hours of the interviewer. That's such an important point to make. Okay, so we have got through it. I thank you so much for watching. You are now well positioned to put together a much stronger application to wash you than you otherwise would have been able to produce had you not made it to the end of this video with me. If you want more personalized college admissions coaching and college application feedback, please visit collegemeister.com where you can sign up to work one-on-one -on -one with me, Craig Meister. And feel free to watch this video over again and make sure you absorbed all of the information that I shared. Please also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and sharing it with your friends. 
If you do get into Wash U, and I hope you do, and you want to show off, in the description below this video are links to my favorite Wash U hoodies, one for men and one for women. So definitely take a look at those. Good luck, and until next time, I'm College Meister Craig Meister with all you need to get in.